This recording is brought to you by Ancient History Encyclopedia and the YouTube channel The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. Comogony Written by Joshua J. Mark Narrated by D. W. Draffin The Kingdom of Comogony, 163 BCE to 72 CE, was a Hellenistic political entity heavily influenced by Armenian and ancient Persian culture and traditions, established in southwestern Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, by Ptolemaeus of Comogony, reigned 163 to 130 BCE, of the Orontid dynasty, who had formerly been satrap, governor, of the region under the Seleucid Empire, 312 to 63 BCE. The Seleucid Empire had been in steady decline since it came into conflict with Rome in 190 C BCE and, by 163 BCE, no longer had the strength to maintain its earlier cohesion. Ptolemaeus seized on the weakness, declared Comogony an independent state, and became its first king. The name derives from Cuma a Neo-Hittite kingdom of the Iron Age, located in the same area, and Comogony would retain indigenous Luwian and Hittite traditions and motifs in its architecture. The region had been part of Urartu, the proto-Armenian kingdom under the name Sophene, which became part of the Achaemenid Empire, circa 550-330 BCE. The Achaemenid Empire fell to Alexander the Great in 330 BCE, and after Alexander's death, the region became part of the Seleucid Empire, at which point Sophene became its own kingdom. The Orontid dynasty ruled Sophene, and Comogony was only one small kingdom among many in that region, until Ptolemaeus broke away in 163 BCE. Comogony was bordered on the east by the Euphrates River and on the west by the Taurus Mountains, and so became a thoroughfare for trade and enriched by its control over merchants' access to the crossings of the Euphrates to and from Mesopotamia. Comogony is commonly referred to as a buffer state between the greater powers of Armenia, Parthia, Pontus and Rome, as it maintained friendly relations with all four, favoring one over the others at different times. Its wealth, from trade and agriculture, would have made it an attractive prize for any of the larger powers of the region, but the kings of Comogony managed to maintain its autonomy until 72 CE, when it was absorbed into the Roman Empire. It is best known for the building projects of its fourth king, Antiochus I Theos, reigned 70 to 38 BCE, especially the monumental statuary of the site known as Nemrut Dak, also Nemrut Dagi, at Mount Nemrut. Early History and Empires As part of Urartu, the larger region around the future Comogony was known as Sophene, named for the indigenous people of the area, while the actual area, which would encompass the future Comogony, was known as Kumu by the Luwians and Hittites who lived there, or by the Assyrian designation Kuinuk. Nothing is known of its history at this time. Urartu declined after the 714 BCE military campaign of the Neo-Assyrian king Sargon II, reigned 722 to 705 BCE, which was so decisive a victory that it thoroughly destabilized the region, making it an easy mark for later Scythian invasions. After the Neo-Assyrian Empire fell in 612 BCE, the region was taken by the Medes, who held it until the rise of the Achaemenid Empire circa 550 BCE. The region's location and importance in trade brought it into contact with Greek culture, and this interaction would define Sophene and later Comogony as a cultural blend of Armenian, Greek, and Persian influences, traditions, 
and religious practices. The Orontid ruling house was Zoroastrian, but they were among those who encouraged the worship of the goddess Anahita, one of the most popular deities of the early Iranian religion, which Zoroastrianism had replaced. Under Zoroastrianism, Anahita continued in popularity as an aspect of the one true god Ahura Mazda, but in some regions she was worshipped as she had been in pre-Zoroastrian Persia. The temples and shrines to Anahita and the seeming polytheism represented by shrines to other deities, such as Mithra, encouraged a comfortable rapport with Greek merchants who came from a polytheistic tradition and would have recognized aspects of their own goddesses in Anahita. This rapport, naturally, encouraged closer contact and a further blending of Armenian, Persian, and Greek cultures. After the Achaemenid Empire fell, Sophene asserted itself as a separate kingdom, breaking away from the satrapy of Greater Armenia to form its own under the Seleucids. Its capital was the town of Karkathioserta, modern-day Egil, Turkey, and its major urban trade center was Arsimosata, later known as Samosata, modern-day Samsat in the Adiyaman province of Turkey. This new satrapy remained a cohesive entity under the Orontid satraps Samus I, reigned 290-260 BCE, through Ptolemaeus of Commogony, reigned as satrap 201-163 BCE, until, as noted, Ptolemaeus founded Commogony. Early Kings and Antiochus I Theos Ptolemaeus claimed descent from the third Achaemenid king Darius I, the Great, reigned 522-486 BCE, to legitimize his reign and moved the capital of his new kingdom to Arsimosata, which was then renamed Samosata. He expanded his kingdom into Cappadocia without resistance from the Seleucid Empire, which between 163-145 to BCE was in steady decline, as it was ruled by three kings in quick succession, who cared more about their own comfort and position than governing. He patterned the administration of his kingdom on the Seleucid model, dividing his realm into satrapies, overseen by a governor who collected taxes, sent them to the king, and were responsible for providing troops for the army. Greek was the official language of the kingdom, but Armenian and Persian were also spoken. Little else is recorded of his reign, but he set the paradigm of the later kings in claiming legitimacy based on their familial connection to the Achaemenid Empire. Ptolemaeus was succeeded by his son Samus II, reigned 130-109 to BCE, also given as Samos II Theosebus Diakaios, who fortified Samosata and is mostly known through coins issued during his reign and inscriptions on Mount Nemrut. It was possibly Samos II who developed the major cities of Camogony, Samosata, Arsamea on the Nymphaios, and Arsamea on the Euphrates, all three cities would later reach their height of grandeur under Antiochus I Theos. Samus II was succeeded by his son, Mithridatus I Callinicus, reigned 109 to 70 BCE, who reigned during the Mithridatic Wars, 89 to 63 BCE, between Rome and Mithridates VI of Pontus reigned 120 to 63 BCE. Concerned for his kingdom's survival in the midst of these hostilities, Mithridates I Callinicus married Laodice, daughter of the Seleucid king Antiochus VIII Grippos, reigned 125 to 96 BCE, who was the son of the powerful Cleopatra Thea, lived circa 164 to 121 BCE. Cleopatra Thea was known as the power behind the Seleucid throne at this time, but her various schemes did nothing but hasten the Seleucid decline, and no help came from Mithridates I Callinicus or the people of Commogony. 
Tigranes the Great of Armenia, reigned 95 to 56 BCE, marched across Camogany during this time, meeting no resistance, and claimed it as part of his Kingdom of Armenia, after the Seleucids were no more than a phantom presence, and while Rome and Pontus were at each other's throats. Mithridates I Callinicus could do nothing about Tigranes' conquest, and so became a vassal king. He was succeeded by Antiochus I, Theos, who consistently tried to balance all three sides of the conflict, Pontus, Rome, and Armenia, to maintain a separate peace for himself while also being ever mindful of Parthia to the east. Once Mithridates VI of Pontus was defeated, however, and then Tigranes surrendered to Rome, Antiochus I Theos, though personally more loyal to Parthia, pledged himself to Pompey the Great, lived 106 to 48 BCE, of Rome. He was rewarded with lucrative trade agreements between regions to the east, including merchants of the Parthian Empire, 227 BCE to 224 CE, and those of Roman Mesopotamia and Kilikia. Antiochus I Theos maintained his legitimacy as a Persian king via his connection to Darius I, but expanded this by claiming direct descent through his mother Laodice VII Thea, born circa 122 BCE, from Seleucus I Nicator, reigned 305 to 281 BCE, founder of the Seleucid Empire, and Ptolemy I Soter, reigned 305-304 to 282 BCE, of the Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt, as well as others who had served as generals of Alexander the Great. He thereby established himself as a Greco-Persian monarch and assumed the title of Antiochus the Just God, friend of Romans and Greeks which pleased Rome, while, at the same time, arranging the marriage of his daughter Laodice to King Orodes II of Parthia, reigned 57-37 to 37 BCE, and securing peace with the East. His clever political maneuverings kept Commogony from being absorbed by either Rome or the Parthians and maintained social stability while he grew rich from trade. Believing himself to be a god in human form, he created a royal cult based upon worship of himself and including a pantheon of syncretized Greco-Persian deities. In order that he might live forever in the hearts of his people and among his gods as their equal, he decreed a great mortuary complex be built at Mount Nemrut, which included an enormous tumulus and ornate statuary of himself the other gods, and protective animals. Out of his vast treasury, he allotted a certain sum to be used in perpetuity to hold parties on Mount Nemrod at his tomb every year on his birthday and the date of his coronation. He explicitly stipulated that everyone who attended was to enjoy themselves fully by setting aside the cares and antagonisms they were involved in at the base of the mountain before making the ascent to his celebration. He also revitalized the three major cities of Camogony, possibly reinforcing the walls around Samosata of Samus II, improved the efficiency of Ptolemaeus's original administrative vision, and brought the kingdom to an economic and cultural height it would not see again until the reign of Antiochus IV, the last king of Camogony. Although Antiochus I Theos managed to maintain friendly relations throughout his reign, he was finally forced to choose sides by his father-in-law Orodes II and backed Orodes' son, Pacorus I, died 38 BCE in a war in Syria against Rome. Pacorus I was defeated and killed, and the victorious Roman general Publius Ventidius Bassus came after Antiochus I Theos for betraying Rome, confining him under siege at Samosata. 
Antiochus tried to bribe his way out of trouble, but Ventidius Bassus rejected his offer. Mark Antony, lived 83 to 30 BCE, took over the siege when it became clear Ventidius Bassus could not break the fortifications, but he had no better luck and withdrew after accepting a bribe of 300 talents, significantly less than what Antiochus had offered Bassus earlier. Antiochus I Theos was killed by the Parthian king Phraates IV, reigned 37 to 2 BCE, in 38 BCE in a coup in which he assassinated Orodes II, Phraates IV's father, and his wife Laodice, the brothers and half-brothers of Phraates IV and Antiochus I Theos of Commogony, who would have sought revenge. Later Kings and Antiochus IV He was succeeded by his son Mithridates II, reigned 38 to 20 BCE, who allied himself with Mark Antony of Rome in his conflict with Octavian, the future Augustus Caesar, reigned 27 BCE to 14 CE. Mithridates II had co-ruled with his father and was no doubt present at Antony's siege of Samosata when Antony had proved himself more reasonable than Bassus. Mithridates II proved his loyalty to Antony by personally commanding his own forces at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE, at which Antony and Cleopatra VII of Egypt were defeated by Octavian. He afterwards swore loyalty to Augustus and continued to align his kingdom with Rome's interests. After his death, he was succeeded by his son Mithridates III, reigned 20 to 12 BCE, about whose reign almost nothing is known. Mithridates III was succeeded by his son Antiochus III Epiphanes, reigned 12 BCE to 17 CE, whose reign was also unremarkable, except for his unexpected death, which left Commogony without a king. Antiochus III's two children, Antiochus IV, lived circa 17 to circa 72 CE, reigned 38 to 72 CE, and Iotapa, reigned 38 to 52 CE, were too young to assume the throne, and the court councillors apparently refused to appoint a regent. They instead appealed to Rome for help in finding a king, and Rome responded by simply taking control of the kingdom, holding it in trust for Antiochus IV between 17 to 38 CE. Antiochus IV and Iotapa were taken to Rome, granted Roman citizenship, and raised as Romans. The brother and sister, as nobles and guests of Rome, moved in the elite patrician circles and made friends with many of the notables of the day. Among Antiochus IV's friends was the young Caligula, adoptive son of the emperor Tiberius, reigned 14 to 37 CE, who would later succeed him, reigned 37 to 41 CE, after Tiberius died and Caligula assumed power. He returned Commogony to Antiochus IV and his by then sister wife Iotapa. He also presented Antiochus IV with all the revenue Commogony had earned as a Roman province since 17 CE, upwards of a million gold pieces, and added a part of Kilikia, Kilikia Aspera, to the kingdom. A year later, Caligula became displeased with Antiochus IV and took the kingdom back, for reasons unknown, placing it again under Roman rule. Antiochus IV continued to live in his kingdom, without any political power, until Caligula was assassinated and his successor, Claudius, reigned 41 to 54 CE, returned Commogony to Antiochus IV. Antiochus IV used Caligula's money to build himself a grand city on the coast of Kilikia, now part of Commogony as Caligula's gift, known as Antiochia ad Cragum, Antioch on the cliffs, or Antioch at Kragus. The city incorporated Greek, Luwian, Hittite, 
Persian, and Armenian architecture, symbolism, and ornamentation to represent all the different ethnic groups of Kamagani. A grand temple was built, ornamented with indigenous designs, notably the six-petal flower of the Luwians and Hittites, who first inhabited the region. Antiochus IV also decreed a great bath complex be constructed, which measured 114 feet long by 65 feet wide, encompassing an area of 5,249 square feet, which was open to the public. A colonnaded street brought visitors from the city's gate to an ornate portico by the pool with a mosaic floor. The mosaic at Antiochia at Kragum, in fact, is the largest ever found in modern-day Turkey and exemplifies the wealth Antiochus IV lavished on his city. Conclusion His sister-wife, Ayotapa, died in 52 CE, and he had another city, Aitap, built in her honor down the coast. He was, at this time, circa 71 CE, among the richest tributary kings of Rome and enjoyed a good relationship with the Roman government. Camogony at this time was at its greatest height since the reign of Antiochus I Theos, and Antiochus IV had just ingratiated himself to the new emperor Vespasian, reigned 69 to 79 CE, by supporting him over other contenders for the throne and sending him and his son troops. In 72 CE, however, a senator named Lucius Junius Caesenius Paetus, governor of Roman Syria, circa 70 to 72 CE, accused Antiochus IV and his sons of plotting to overthrow Vespasian. There was no evidence of any conspiracy on the part of Comagene, but this did not seem to matter. Vespasian was notoriously paranoid, and the wealth and popularity of Antiochus IV was indisputable. And so Vespasian listened to Pietus and gave him leave to march on Antiochia at Kragum without ever even asking Antiochus IV to refute the charge. According to some accounts, the sons of Antiochus IV met Pietus's troops in battle. According to others, there was no battle at all. But all agree that Antiochus IV himself did not raise arms against Rome. He most likely surrendered to Pietus, who clearly had only made the accusation to acquire Camogene's wealth, but this is unknown. He left the city afterwards, lived in Kilikia Campestris, Greece, and finally at Rome. What happened to Pietus is unknown, but Antiochus was received with respect at Rome as were his sons, and must have died there, although no death date is known. Vespasian abolished the kingdom of Camogene the same year and absorbed the region into the province of Kilikia. Today the kingdom of Camogene is remembered primarily through the monumental site of Nemrut Dagi on Mount Nemrut, rediscovered in 1881 CE, and a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987 CE, and the various other building projects, reliefs, and statuary from the reign of Antiochus I Theos and his successors. The ruins of Antiochia ad Kragum and Aitap also remain popular tourist attractions as well as communal recreation areas down by the water for the local population. Nemrut Dagi, however, is the central monument to Camogene and its kings, drawing millions of visitors every year from around the world and fulfilling the wish of Antiochus I Theos that his name should live on forever.
My name is D.W. Draffin. I do voiceover, and I'm available for hire.